So in this video we are trying to get a natural laminar effect. Stick around to the end to find out if we did it. Let's go. We are back with the natural stones. <laughs> so we're going to go with a Laramar effect. I've seen lots of people doing this with coasters. Now I wanted to see if I could get it in a really simple way in some pendants. Now Laramar, the appearance of Laramar, it varies. You have some effects like this. This is the one that I want. It's really nice. And it reminds me of a technique that I saw um, back when I first started resin on how to get like a um, water effect. And it's it's really, really simple. So I'm going to show you how I got from... <laughs> These were my first couple of attempts and I'll talk you through where I went wrong with those. Two effects like this. I've only started playing with this this morning so for about an hour I've been playing around with this and I've got some really good Larimar effects so far. So what we're going to be using is the Let's Resin UV for this. Now I'm, the reason why I'm using UV is because I'm going to do it in this mold and I'll show you why I need to use UV but I'm pretty sure you could do this with two part resin in a flat mold because with a mold like this your resin's gonna just self level and seep down into the middle and puddle whereas with a flat mold like this that's not really gonna occur and as always please watch the video the whole way through it really does help my channel and it helps with the algorithms and YouTube will push my video out <laughs> right so as always excuse the state of my mold these are kind of practice molds just for me to play around with so what I'm going to begin with is our white now I'm using the Let's Resin Ocean White works well with UV resin too as long as you don't add too much but remember if you're adding pigments to UV resin the light needs to be able to cure through otherwise you're going to end up with a yucky mess so I've just poured a small amount of UV resin into there and this stuff <laughs> you I've said it before you really do not need much I could probably get away with just rubbing the edge of the bottle neck nib whatever you want to call it and then just mixing that that's not come off is it it's, that's that's really really not working Dan let's try it again I can see it moving around hold on It's just stuck to the stick. Yeah, we're going to need a little bit more. <laughs> we're off to a good start. Tiny, tiny, tiny amount is all we need. There we go. So this will be kind of like our base. Then we can leave that just for the bubbles to rise. And whilst that is doing that, we can mix up our blue. So I'm using the Let's Resin liquid pigment dyes for this. If you have the blue UV resin, give it a try. We'll mix up a little bit more of this. I'm going to go with one drop to begin with and just see how strong it is. If I need to add a more, one more I can. Don't do this with the sapphire blue because it will turn green. Use the normal blue if you've got these. And these are translucent, they are not opaque. I'll go with one more just to make it a little bit stronger. And then just thoroughly mix that in. And then just leave that to the side with the white for the bubbles and we can use a long neck knife. <laughs> long net lighter to get rid of those in a moment so time to use our white we all know what happens when you put a small amount of resin inside a mold it begins to separate and it causes almost a cell effect let me show you so i'm applying i'm just i'm not even being careful doing this i'm just rubbing this white onto my mold that's all i'm doing you can go up the sides, it really doesn't matter. 
but with two part resin remember it is going to come down the sides and end up just flat on the bottom so you may find that these molds dip slightly in the middle anyway so just be wary of that if you are using two part so you can see it's created these empty areas now what we can do is use that to our advantage so we take our blue and we just start to just fill those empty areas and this will give it a much more natural effect and if you want the kind of cell effect you can drop the blue over the white and that will kind of push the white aside but you can see where I'm going with this it really is a simple way to make this Larimar effect in a pendant or earrings whatever you want to do with it that's entirely up to you and again you don't even need to be tidy with this you can just dab around and just make sure the whole base that will be the front of the piece is covered then what we do is just cure it so all we need to do now is just fill that up um, and if you're worried about the sides you can do the same just dab on some of the white around the sides it is really up to you how you do this with two part again what I would do is layer it with blue and then stir in some white pigment around the sides just to make it look like it's it's carrying on throughout the stone and then I can just top that up with more blue and just do it in layers it would help if I mix my blue and what you could even do is just stir in some more of the white just to carry that through the piece to make it a bit less translucent when we demold it so yeah just layer it until it's until it's full if you're using two part you wouldn't need to layer as much as what I am now now as the other one's curing and I'm layering it I might as well show you on this side so we do the same thing but the only difference with this is that we need to kind of tilt our mold if you really want to be that precise it's worth it it really is worth it so again I really am just being messy with this and just spreading that white pigment everywhere it's gonna run down some of it is gonna run down but that's gravity for you <laughs> So then again, I'm taking my blue, I'm not being careful in any way, I'm just dabbing that all over the piece. Like so. And then we cure that quickly. And then we can just tilt our mold. I'm just using the pigment box and again I'm just using my white now to just smear that what we're doing is creating a shell the shell is the main part because then we can just once the shells made we can then fill that up which won't take long it's getting windy outside now again with our blue just dab it on, it really doesn't matter how tidy it looks. And then again, cure that and just repeat it. Just move the mold around and, and just make a shell. So there is my shell. I am brushing this. <laughs> so all we need to do now is just layer that with our blue. And again, you can just mix in some white as you're layering this just to make it a bit more smoky and less plastic like more translucent transparent just make it a bit more like a Larimar stone now with these ones you don't really need to tilt the mold so much you're just dabbing the white and then dabbing the blue and then just cure now with this one down here I'm going to put more white in and just drop the blue 
into it and see what happens. So all I'm going to do is take my blue and then just drop it. It's very similar to that effect that I was telling you about with the, the water effect. I'm not sure if it's going to sink or swim. <laughs> I'm not even sure that my light's going to keel through that, you know. So what I've done now is just combine some of the white that I have left had left over with the blue just to back these, just to make them a bit less transparent. I would also recommend once you're finished on the back sides, <laughs> flip your moulds and cure it from the underneath too. Oh, and as always, massive shout out to my channel members, anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks, thank you very much. All product links are in the description box below with 10% discount from all Let's Resin products. Off to my glove. I try and keep hold of my gloves for as long as I can. But remember, we can cut these off to cover our needle tip bottles if we put UV in them, so don't bin them. Okay, half, can I tick off the Laramar effect? off of my natural stones. I've got a little cup of water here just in case of oxygen inhibition. If my UV resin is sticky, I can stick it in there and give it a blast for a minute under my light. And that is just water. But I'll do that after. Right, let's go with the small ones first. Again, excuse my holy glove. <laughs> ah, the white wasn't strong enough. But, the stone comes in many different forms. It's not bad. I quite like it. It's very shiny. Let's go with the teardrop. It looks very natural, but again, that white just isn't strong enough. A little bit more compared to my first run, my practice run, I really did put some, put some white in there. So I was a bit shy this time. Let's go with the oval. I think it's going to be the same because it was the same white. You never know. Wow. That's that's perfect, I think. Maybe a little bit more white, but it does look like Laramar. Really interested to see what this this one down here looks like. I think it will look a bit too man-made. Let's go with this one first. My knobbly bit stuck. <laughs> wow. See what I mean about my mold being very used, but I can always coat that. That is spot on. It looks natural. It has enough white. I like it. That is really, really nice. Again, I'm very confident this would work with two part if you did it in two layers. Especially if this one has worked. This will prove that two part would work because you were just putting a small amount of your white and then drop in that blue. See what I mean about it being a little bit sticky. You can see the marks where I've prodded the back to see if it was set. Wow. Okay, let me get the picture back up. Now that is pretty spot on, isn't it? I'm super impressed with that. Considering I only started doing this now, well, probably a, a couple of hours ago now. That is incredible. I think we can tick this one off. We can definitely tick this one off, guys. Right, as always, give the video a thumbs up. Drop me a comment. If you haven't subbed, hit that button for me. And I will see you for the next one. Bye for now.